Um, lots of excitement heading into the season, I guess. Uh, you can't win the Stanley Cup in October, but how important is it to get off to a good start, um, you know, going forward? Well, I thought we've had a really good month here over uh, the month of September and into October. Our players came back early. They demonstrated a want um, to make sure they were ready to start training camp. Um, took care of a lot of business on their own in that way. And then when training camp started, I think, you know, as a coaching staff, we got a lot of good good work and good practices, good reps. I said to this group in here before, the big thing I wanted our group um, doing well coming out of training camp was thinking well, thinking the right things. And we put a lot of emphasis on making sure that we're taking care of our day and taking care of our standard. And we've done that to this point. We had a really good day today, and we're looking forward uh, to getting on a plane, going to Vancouver, and taking care of tomorrow's day as well. You look at this division, and arguably it probably could be the strongest in, in the NHL right now. Just give me a thought on how every game, especially division games, are going to mean so much, and they're, they're going to be so important to going forward. I leave the prognostications to the people in this room. Um, I, I don't spend too much time on that DVD. For me, uh, I want to make sure our team is thinking properly. I want to make sure that we're prepared to execute properly. And I want to make sure that we get the most out of our day. And I believe that if we do those things, wins take care of themselves. Uh, Jay, just kind of on the note of the start of the season, this team is considered to be a contender. You've gone to where you've gone the last two seasons. Do you perceive it as a... Um, challenge, I guess, or, you know, something that's really important to focus on step by step and not look too far ahead? Yeah, that's how I'm wired personally. And that's been a real focal point for our team here is um, we understand the outside noise. We understand um, outside expectations. But for us, um, we're prepared uh, to begin this journey or this marathon with 31 other teams. It starts tonight. It starts tonight. Um, everybody has an optimistic bent to their um, the beginning of their seasons. I'm not worried about any of that stuff. I'm worried about our team, our team executing at the, the rate it needs to execute at, our team having the proper mindset, our team having um, the, the mental capacity and the physical capacity to get better every single day and that doesn't mean you're going to win every day we get it we understand that uh, we're striving to win we're striving um, to win each game we play but for us I think wins take care of themselves if your process is in the right place um, I know you've been asked about this almost every day, but just do you have any update on uh, Ekholm, Kulak, and McLeod in terms of their status for tomorrow? Well, all of them had another good day today. I have not spoken to the medical department, but they're all trending in the right direction. We're optimistic as towards their availability. When you're answering Slav's previous question, you use the term mental capacity. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask one thing that might make that up, just kind of about wisdom and experience. I mean, and you were with some of these guys when you, when you and Todd were here and you saw them at quite young. Yep. When you're, they're quite young. Is, do you get the sense like this is truly the most seasoned and wise group you've been around in Edmonton? Well, you couple the fact that we have a lot of really skilled players and skilled players that have gone on a journey of a regular season. Some of them are at eight, year eight, year nine, year ten. Um, and as you go, they maintain their skill, but they gain experience. So the, I, I'm a firm believer in experiential learning. Um, you pick up some scarring along the way. I don't see that as a bad thing. Um, I think that is how you learn. Um, and we can talk about it all you want, but until you're in those situations, until you live and breathe those situations, um, it feels different. So I like the look in the eye of our group. I like the fact that they came back early and demonstrated to each other how important it was to be ready for training camp. I like the fact that they've put in a ton of work in training camp. Now it's on us to go out and execute starting tomorrow night. Okay, so here's the other question you're asked almost every day. Uh, yep. 
who is your starting goaltender tomorrow in Vancouver? You'll have to buy a ticket uh, tomorrow night to see who comes out that gate first or be paying attention uh, on television. Okay, so I'm kind of gonna piggyback a little bit on his first question. We, we did ask Connor if he feels like this is the best team entering into the season. He said yes, kind of a little bit of what you touched on, but do you feel like this is so far the best team that the Oilers have iced, possibly going to ice tomorrow? Um, Years. I feel that our team is in a good spot right now. We're about to answer that question. I can't tell you that. We have to talk is talk and, and um, you know, the roster on paper is the roster on paper. I like where our team's at. We're about to answer that question. It starts with a, a good game tomorrow night, but it's an 82-game journey. Um, we believe we have the necessary people for this to be an inside job, that we have the people inside our organization that have the proper things inside uh, to get to where we want to get to. That begins with a good first game tomorrow night. And how good does it feel to know that, once again, the Oilers are favorites to win the Cup, and for diehard longtime fans, that's not something that you heard over, you know, the 90s, 2000s, to hear that every year that the Oilers are going to be favorites. How do you feed into that? I know you say that, you know, that's not something you really, that's not really your personality, but how can you kind of feed that to make it, Well, you know, get the guys to believe to that as well? I would say that the, my job is the coach, is to coach and I don't worry so much about all of the outside expectation. I think um, the standard that our players are looking to play towards is what's first and foremost in our minds. Um, and I can say that we have high expectations of ourselves uh, to live up to that standard. The beauty of it is you're in this room right here. It's got all these pictures and jerseys and what a fantastic, beautiful facility uh, we have. We don't have to create a standard. It's, it's right here. We see the standard. Our job as this next generation is to add to that legacy. And the way you add to that legacy is by playing towards your full potential. And that is where our mind is. It's not on the end result. It's on taking care of our day and taking care of our standard. Jay, uh, last year your penalty kill really struggled the first 15 games, then progressively got better in the final 25. It was quite good. Yep. Um, penalty kills across the league, for whatever reason, they seem to have bigger dips than we, we necessarily see out of power play. Any reason why you feel like you, you know, your penalty kill would, would go on that long of a, of a struggle? Um, How do you avoid it this year? Well, how I would answer that question, Jason, is it was interesting to see the power play numbers in the league last year. So the power play numbers were up across the board. Um, you know, it used to be if you were at the 20% mark, you were in the top five or maybe top 10 at least. And now that's not the case. So league-wide penalty kill numbers were down. There were a couple outliers that had really high numbers. I think um, last season, uh, there were a couple of, um, we would call them internally, like meltdown games where what could go wrong went wrong and it ended up in the back of our net and we were fishing it out. Um, I think there was some changes in the penalty kill during the season that gave us a lot of confidence. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we added some pieces along the way that our penalty kill type people Guys like um, Vincent Taharney came in the lineup on a regular basis after Christmas. Ekholm was added at the trade deadline. Bugstad was added at the trade deadline. And, um, you know, but again, that's last year. We start with a fresh sheet starting tomorrow against a really good power play in Vancouver. Do you expect to have Deharnay and Ekholm, if he's healthy, together as a unit on the penalty kill? Um, that's certainly a look that we have, but I think we're flexible. I mean, DeHarnay can play with Nurse uh, on the penalty kill. Cease can play with Nurse or Ekholm. And, you know, those guys, I think, take the lion's share of minutes on the penalty kill. I think Philip Roberg's a really good penalty killer as well. Um, but we'll see. I think, you know, we feel good about the work that was put in in the preseason. But like I said, it's a huge challenge tomorrow with the amount of skill that Vancouver can ice on a five-man unit. Good, thanks guys.